I haven't really been super vocal about this on my channel, but I'm actually a huge Jurassic Park fan. I love Lost World even. I think the third one's even a good movie, despite uh, being the most flawed of the original three, in my opinion. Um, I love Fallen Kingdom. I'd even put that above the third one, although below uh, Lost World. The movie that I actually think is the most flawed out of all of the movies is actually the uh, first Jurassic World. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but... That was the only one of the movies that I, like, walked out of the theater and I just thought, did I like that? Now that I've let some time pass, though, I've kind of come to terms with how I feel about it. Um, I do like the movie overall. However, I just, like I said, I think it's the most flawed of the bunch. I do think, though, that everyone kind of has their own, like, pet peeves that just, like, really irk them when they watch movies. And it's kind of, like, specific from person to person. And with me, for some reason, the first Jurassic World is the uh, only movie in the Jurassic franchise that just, like, really bothered me at times. Like, I completely admit the, the other sequels have their flaws, but, like, when I watch a movie, the way, like, I judge movies is, like, can I understand why they made the decision they made? And with all of the other movies, even with the big flaws they have, I can generally be like, okay, I can understand why that happened, like, why that was an issue and why they overlooked that. But with the, uh, for some reason, the first Jurassic World, there's, like, a multitude of things that I'm just like, why the hell is that in the movie? Like, that didn't need to be there. Like, I don't even understand it all. So, my aim with this video is I actually made some, uh, edits to the, uh, first Jurassic World, and I'm gonna show you guys what I would do. It's only, like, seven or eight edits or something like that, and this is what I would do to improve the film, and I think that these small edits... And it's just taking stuff out actually improved the film from something I would have given like a 5 or a 6 out of 10 to to maybe like a 7 or 8 out of 10. And the last thing I want to mention before we get started here is I actually have like virtually no issues with the Chris Pratt stuff. I love the raptor training. I love all of that. The main thing I'm going to be focusing on um, are actually, uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise, the kids in the movie. Because I feel like that they barely add anything to the movie and they're kind of unlikable even at times, especially the older one. And I do make a couple other edits that don't involve the kids, but it's mostly the kids. So anyways, here's the edits I made. Call me every day and text me pics so I don't forget what you look like. I'm only going to be gone a week. Zach, you're not going off to war here. Please. Come on. I... I love you. See you later. Vamanos! Bye. Okay? Bye. You in, buddy? So the question that comes to my mind here is why are you establishing Zack, or the uh, older kid, as, like, an unlikable character from the get-go? He's just, like, not even saying I love you back to his girlfriend. He's just, like, he kind of just comes off as a douche almost immediately. And I could tell the movie was, like, trying to be funny with this, but I just don't like this style of humor. And once again, like, you just, like, almost immediately don't like him. And he's such a big part of the movie that it's like, why would you do that? I just don't get it. So here's the edit I made to this part. Call me every day and text me pics so I don't forget what you look like. I'm only going to be gone a week. Zach, you're not going off to war here. Please. I know it hurts, sweetheart. Are you gonna be okay? Okay, so I know this edit wasn't perfect, but I like it a lot more than the original movie, and I think that it still is funny, and also it doesn't, like, establish the older kid as a douchebag, kind of more of, like, a typical teenager. And I think what the movie tried to do is kind of establish him as a typical teenager, but you don't need him to be a jerk to do that. So, I don't know, I think it's funnier just leaving that part out and having the uh, parents just be like, you're gonna be okay? Like, after he just says bye to his girlfriend, I feel like that's more of a, what a typical teenage situation would be like. I don't know. So anyways, that's the first edit I made. Here's the next scene I made an edit to. When they first opened, they had eight species. Now they have 14 herbivores and six carnivores. That's like 50 tons of food a week. I'm just not a fan of the parts in the movie where Zack just, like, glances at the girls and there's this, like, awkward silence and... I don't know, I just don't like it. Uh, I think it just comes off as, like, 
establishing him even further is an unlikable character. And, I mean, since I made that edit to the first part, I felt like that pretty much every scene where he's doing that to girls later on in the movie, I just don't think they're necessary, so I cut them all out. So you're going to be seeing that too. But anyways, here's my edit to that part. When they first opened, they had eight species. Now they have 14 herbivores and six carnivores. That's like 50 tons of food a week. Once again, it's just taking stuff out that I feel like doesn't need to be there, and I feel like it makes the movie more watchable. Uh, ideally, obviously, they would have probably just not had Zack even, like, look down, and the little brother would have just been kind of, like, bothering him. Which would have played into, like, later in the movie how Grey keeps kind of, like, hounding Zack or bothering him, being like, oh, I want to see this, I want to see this, and it was still kind of, like, established that, like, Zack is, like, mean to Grey and, like, not ruin that aspect of the movie, but also not make him as unlikable once again. So, uh, anyways, here is the, uh, third scene that I felt like needed editing. Ron's got you VIP access, so you can get on all the rides that are waiting in line. Let's go! Dude, she said we had to wait. I don't want to wait anymore! So this one isn't too bad to me, but it always felt like a little awkward for some reason how Grey like runs into the room and just like, I don't want to wait anymore. Like something about the way he says it doesn't really sound convincing to me. I feel like the acting was a little off or something. I'm a really big fan of the saying in filmmaking, show, don't tell. And I feel like that this scene comes off as more powerful if you just cut out some of the dialogue completely and only have the Jurassic Park theme playing. So, here's my edit. Ron's got you VIP access, so you can get all the rides without waiting in line. I'd also like to give a special thanks to my friend Sammy for helping me out with that edit. But, um, anyways, uh, I just feel like that just having the music play and not having dialogue kind of helps the viewer be able to, like, instill themselves in Grey a little bit more. Like, feel what Grey's feeling instead of being, like, told what to feel. So, I think that that makes it more kind of iconic when he opens the doors and you see, like, the fully realized Jurassic World theme park for the first time. But anyways, on to the next scene that I felt like needed editing. Proteins and the cell membranes get all mixed up and, 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 and uh, act as a natural preservative. DNA can survive for a millennia that way. So now, even if the amber mines dry up, they'll still have bones Shut up. <laughs> What do you think's gonna happen from you just staring at them? <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Enjoy the ride. So this said it's kind of self-explanatory. Once again, Zach's just kind of staring at the girls. And I feel like it really doesn't add anything to the movie. It's just kind of almost like obnoxious to watch and a little awkward. I do think it's kind of funny how Grey kind of calls him out on it. But like, once again, I just don't think that the movie benefits at all from it. So, uh, yeah, here's my edit. The time is that the soft tissue is preserved because the iron and the dinosaur blood genetics are radicals. And those are highly reactive. Enjoy the ride. So this one feels a little bit awkward too, but I, I still think it's better than what the film gave us. Uh, so anyways, here's the next one. They say we lost two guys. What's a code 19? I said out of containment. These people they never learn. They're gonna learn all kinds of things about their new asset now. Hey, yeah, it's me. We might have an opportunity here. Has 
Mom and Dad get divorced while one of us be with Mom and the other with Dad. What? Why'd you say that? Because they are. No, they're not. Getting di they're not getting divorced. Look, you haven't been around long enough. They've always been that way. They get mail from two different lawyers. That doesn't mean anything. I googled their divorce lawyers. All right, whatever. You know what? It doesn't matter, okay? I'm gonna be gone in two years anyway. I mean, all my friends' parents are divorced, and... Uh... Hey, knock it off. <laughs> are you gonna cry? <laughs> Look, you're gonna get two everything, right? You're gonna get two birthdays, two Thanksgivings, two... I don't want two of everything. Yeah, well, it's not up to you. All right, there's a point you have to grow up. So there's multiple reasons for this one. Once again, the whole Zack staring at the girls thing. But what almost bothers me even more this time around is like, why is Gray talking about this like whole divorce thing? Like, where did this even come from? Like, there was a little bit of squabbling between the parents earlier on in the movie. But like, this scene just kind of feels like it's like forcing a plot point into the movie that wasn't even like established beforehand. Um, I, I don't know, it just feels awkward to me, and once again, it kind of establishes Zack as, like, an unlikable character. So, uh, here's my edit to this part. This is one of the ones I feel like works, uh, fairly well. It, it feels very natural, in my opinion. I set out a containment. These people, they never learn. They're gonna learn all kinds of things about their new asset now. Hey, yeah, it's me. We might have an opportunity here. As far as feeling very natural goes, this is one of my favorite edits uh, that I've made, like I said before. I just really like how he goes, we might have an opportunity here, and then you hear, like, the hardcore music. Like, the music helps amplify the scene right before it. It's like, we got an opportunity here. Dun, 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 dun. I like that. But anyways, so here's the next scene that I thought needed editing. I'm a pretty tolerant person when it comes to movies doing, like, something that would never happen in real life, as long as it's kind of, like, for the betterment of the film. But this is one of those scenes that just drives me nuts. Like, they stop at the edge of the cliff, they're getting chased by this huge freaking dinosaur. Like, no one is gonna think twice about jumping off that cliff into the water. Like, maybe for a split second, but, like, the fact that they, like, stop, and then Gray's like, I can't, and then Zack's like, one... Two, three, like, you're not gonna count, <laughs> like, I don't know, for some reason that one just drives me nuts, like, they count before they jump in, like, it's, it's like, it's either, like, certain death or you jump into that freaking water, like, I don't know, that, 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 that part bothers me, so here's my edit. <laughs> So I think that works way better. They stop for just a split second, kind of contemplate, are we going to die if we jump off this cliff for sure? Uh, Dominus Rex tries to eat them, and they jump right into the water. I think that it adds to the action, makes the scene feel more tense, and just is better overall. Also, this is sort of random, but uh, does anyone else just love the CG on the Indominus Rex when it comes out of the trees right there? It's probably like one of my favorite shots CG-wise goes in the movie. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little off topic, but I just love that shot. I think it looks super realistic. Anyways, though, the next part that I thought needed to cut actually happens immediately afterwards. This is one of my least favorite parts in the whole movie. Uh, here it is. You jumped. <laughs> What? 
this part just drives me crazy. Like, I appreciate that they were trying to make a sentimental moment, but the fact that Zack is like, you jumped, like, like it makes it sound like that, like, there was, like, something that happened, like, earlier in the movie, like, established that Grey was, like, afraid of heights or something. But that was, like, the first time you even knew that he wouldn't have wanted to, like, jump off a cliff when he's like, I can't, or whatever. And that part just feels so forced that when they get to them, like, washing up on, like, the shore or whatever, and he's like, you jumped, it's like they're trying to establish, like, a emotional scene from something that was, like, already dumb to begin with. Like, the way that I would have done it, and I thought this would have been a cooler opening anyways, is, like, I don't know, maybe they're at, like, some dinosaur-themed like, rock climbing place at the beginning of the movie, and maybe Zack's making fun of Grey a little bit because he's, like, afraid of heights or something, and they're talking about how they're excited to, like, go to Jurassic World, and then later in the movie you get to this part with the cliff, and that would make it a lot more meaningful when they hesitate and jump, and he's like, you jumped. And because it shows that, like, even though he was making fun of him earlier, and uh, Grey was afraid of heights earlier that he overcame that, and then that would, like, add to, like, the sentimental bond between the brothers. But when you just force it in like this, like, five seconds before he says you jumped, it just feels very unnatural and, like, really crappy to me. It just feels like a cop-out. It's like, oh, we feel like these kids don't have, an, like, enough of an emotional bond. Let's just, like, force one in there. That's what it feels like to me. Just like with the whole divorce seen before it just they keep doing this thing in this movie where they just keep trying to force you to care about their emotional bond but like me as someone in the audience i just didn't care at all like i was just like these kids are just kind of dumb especially zach <laughs> anyway sorry for my ramble but uh here's my edit of that part and once again i feel like this this edit is one of my favorite ones that i've made and it uh I feel like it really speaks to the whole show don't tell thing. <laughs> as far as this one goes, it's like if you don't know how to write a convincing like dialogue between the kids, just let it happen through like visuals. Just show the like audience that like these kids are getting closer by the uh, traumatic experiences they're going through and I think it also kind of helps show that like in times of hardship when things are getting really rough even like family members that might not act like they like each other very much especially siblings might kind of show that they have this bond that's like we're brothers but anyways here's the next edit that I made there's only a couple more Okay, this is a minor nitpick, and this one's pretty opinionated because, like, I just have a very distinct sense of humor. But I personally think that that joke is already funny, and there's no reason for the kid to say, yeah, definitely him, at the very end. I think it's funnier if they just kind of, like, exchange, like, odd glances to each other, then it cuts to the next scene because it adds to the, like, comedy, in my opinion. So, here it is like that. No, I feel safe. Can we stay with you? never leaving you as long as you live. No, 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 him! So once again, for me, it's just kind of like, why is it in there when it doesn't need to be? Just cut it out. It's already funny. Uh, so here's the next edit. Um, nothing's getting in here, right? Do you remember that ghost at the old house? Do you remember the one in the garage? That protected you, right? You mean a battle axe out of a ruler and a paper plate? Yeah. 
Yeah, see, nothing's gonna get you while I'm around, okay? But you're not always gonna be around. Yeah, well. Hey. We're brothers, okay? We'll always be brothers and we'll always come back to one another. No matter what. No matter what? No matter what. Once again, they're just adding some, like, scene in there just to kind of force the emotional connection they want the audience to feel with the two kids. But the kids just weren't very well written to begin with. So in my opinion, just cut it out or show don't tell. But with that scene, just I just say cut it completely. So here it is with the cut. So I like how that kind of just keeps the action going. It doesn't, like, branch off from, like, what you really want to see and shows the kids, like, dumb relationship or whatever. I like how it just uh, gets straight to the point. It's like we got Chris Pratt, we got the Raptors, we're keeping the action moving. I like that a lot more. So uh, this um, last edit I'm about to show you guys, where I'm going to show you the original clip first, of course, but uh, this, this edit that I made to this clip, is one of my favorite ones because it kind of like added something to the movie that I felt like not only took out a scene I don't like, but made like a scene later on better. So I feel like I'm kind of ending with a bang here. But anyway, so uh, here's the last one. Hey. They said we had to evacuate. There's a boat. You coming? Someone has to stay behind. Boyfriend. Yeah, but I didn't know that you guys were like together together. We are. <laughs> oh, that's good. I just you've never like you don't mention them ever. No, I'm at work. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. okay. You gonna be okay? Yeah. So once again, another scene where it doesn't involve the uh, the kids this time, oddly enough, but I just don't like that scene. It just bothers me. Like, it just doesn't add anything to the movie, and also it, like, breaks away from the action and shows that. And it's like, you kind of feel bad for the guy, but you can tell that they're just doing it to try to, like, shoehorn, like, a joke in there. And I'm really not a fan of humor that, like, kind of, like, insists on itself. And I feel like that's, like, insisting on itself. Like, look at me, I'm funny. But I, I don't know, I'm, I'm much more of a fan of, like, naturalistic humor that just kind of, like, just kind of is just, it's just funny. But that, that's, like, one of those things that I just feel like isn't funny, at least to me personally. This could just be a personal preference. Maybe some people really like that scene. But anyways, here's my version without that. And I think it also adds something to uh, later on in the movie that I really like. Hey. They said we had to evacuate. There's a boat. You coming? So I don't remember that guy's name, but I have, like, mixed feelings on him as a character already. Um, it just seems like he's supposed to be the comic relief, but I only find, like, half the stuff he does funny. But that kind of makes me like him more if you edit that scene, because it's like... Showing that he's, like, brave and he's gonna stay behind, but they're actually not trying to make a joke about it. So, I don't know, for some reason I like the way that works, and then it also adds to his character later, I feel like. When he, uh, doesn't want to press the button to let the T-Rex out, and then, like, Claire convinces him to press it. Um, and she's like, just do something with your life for once, or whatever. So, I don't know, I think that that establishes him as, like, somewhat brave and makes his character more likable. So that's why I like that edit, and it takes out a joke that I don't like. So I like that one a lot. Anyways, guys, uh, that's the last one. Not sure if uh, everyone's going to agree with all my edits here, but I had a fun time making this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you guys liked what you saw, make sure to uh, subscribe and like the video and... Um, as usual, guys, stay tuned for more. I appreciate you watching. This was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. 
Um, so, yeah. See you guys later. I don't blame people for their mistakes, but I do ask that they pay for them.